So like I told you, we're going to use stable diffusion. It's pretty much one of the standards around the industry. Um, we're going to use a program called Focus. It's an image generator that's absolutely free and you can get it off of GitHub. I'm going to leave some links to it and I'll leave some links to some videos that show you how to use it. Um, we're not going to talk about that so much, but it runs on your, your own system. It's not a cloud version and you can create thousands of images for free. Um, unlike when you go to softwares like, uh, you know, Leonardo or Firefly, things like that, where you work off of credits and, you know, you burn your credits up, especially on the free accounts and you're done this, uh, this way, this sets up is you put it on your own PC and there's literally no limit to the amount of images you can run, I guess, until you fill up your hard drive if you want. So when we do a, a good prompt, we're going to get good images on these. But the thing is, is that they're random. We're looking for specific poses. We want something exactly what the way we want it. Um, so what we're going to do here is to get these poses we want. We're going to jump over on to the, to the internet here. And we're just going to look for the pose that we had in mind. I, I just want kind of a shoulder shot mid photo, you know. Um, so we want something with a solid background. And that's going to make it a lot easier. It's not necessary but it does make it a lot easier and i find this guy down here a uh, good solid background crisp picture and this guy's going to look nothing like our finished product but it gives us the pose we're looking for so we're going to take him over into photoshop and uh we're going to uh take this image and we're going to bring it to 1344 by 704 and i only chose that because it matches one of the presets on my stable diffusion and it just makes for an easier job in the long run. Now, when we put this guy in here, we're going to need to make him fill the entire frame. So we may need to stretch the background a little bit, but you want to make sure you get his proportions the way you want them. So once we get the background straightened out, we're going to save it and save it whatever you want, just in a place where you can find it. And we're going to uh, drag this over into our uh, focus, our stable diffusion generator. So we're going to use it as an image prompt and we're going to set the settings low. I put mine on just subtle and the quality is on high speed. All we're doing here is trying to clear this picture up a little bit to give us something solid to work with. Now, once we've got that, we're going to bring him back into Photoshop. And you can see now that our image is... It's a little cartoony, but it's nice and crisp and clean. So since I'm going to want my character to be from Star Wars, we're going to work on a Jedi here. Uh, I want him to have a white robe. So we're going to paint a you know, very rudimentary white robe on this character and you know, give it a little V-neck. And uh, we're going to add just a little bit of shading to it. You don't have to do that, but any shading you start with will actually make the, the process go just a little bit faster. We also want this character to have a hood, so we're going to put a, a very basic hood on this character. I mean, this is something that you don't have to have any artistic skills to do. Um, we'll throw a couple little shading spots in on the hood here just to, to give the AI something to work with as a reference point. And then we're going to throw this picture back in now as our image prompt. And we're going to run that again, like I said, on the low quality. And you can already see on the first run here that the the AI kind of knows what we want. It's already starting to make it look a little bit like a robe. So here's where the process uh, starts to get fun. We're going to drag that picture that we just created and make that our new image prompt. And we're going to run it again. And we're going to keep repeating this process until we get to a point where it's starting to look like something that that we're looking for. And then we will be able to take that back over into Photoshop and start working on some of the details. This is the basic prompt that we've started with. Um, we will probably be adding to that later as we add details along the way. So now we're back in Photoshop and we're going to add our lightsaber. The nice thing here is we can pick, you know, exactly the color that we want, the angle that we want. Um, so I'm going to go with a green lightsaber on this one and just make a real basic you know lightsaber with a light glow and then the white stripe down the middle and it's that's all that the ai would need now we're going to add a little reflection onto his uh robe here i add another layer when i do that so that i can 
uh, blur it out a little bit and then go back and clean up the edge, but it doesn't have to be perfect. But what this will do is tell the AI that the, uh, the lightsaber is glowing off of his, his cloak. So we'll bring that back into, uh, our generator here and we're going to run the prompt again as we have been and uh, we'll probably run it two or three times here and we're going to each time pull the finished image down from the top and we're going to drop it back down as our image prompt so when we run it again now you can see that the lightsaber is starting to look better the glow on his cloak is starting to actually look like you know a light reflection light spilling onto it so we're getting closer to what we want and the skin and the the details are starting to get there too. So after we run this through a couple of more times um, and the, you know, the, the light reflection and the lightsaber start to look really good, we're going to stop there for the moment and we're going to go back over to Photoshop. Now, when we take a look at it, we can see in Photoshop here that the, the glow on the cloak looks really good. Um, so what we're going to do now is we might want to add some accessories. Like I think I want him to have a necklace with maybe like a, a kyber crystal mounted in the, the necklace. So we just come in here and we make, like I said, a, most of our art is on this. Is it's just very rudimentary. And we're going to make a, a little pendant that is just hangs on a, sim a simple necklace. And we're going to add a generic little crystal shape to the middle of it here. Um, and remember, this isn't super important how detailed this is. Um, pick your color, you know, I'm going to go with a blue crystal. But the one thing to hear that does help a little bit is adding some reflections. Now, they can be very basic, but just gives the AI something to work with to know that this is a reflective object. Now, once we have that, we're going to save that and we're going to go back one more time over to our, our generator and we're going to drop this image in and we're going to run the process again. We are going to add now into our prompt a uh, gold necklace with a blue crystal. So as you can see, being that the picture is already fairly detailed, the AI took this one really quick and brought it into a pretty good detail. So after we run that a couple of times, this necklace is going to look really good and it's going to have um, a lot of detail to it. Now we can add as many accessories as we want this way, but we're going to stop here just for the video's sake. Um, what we're going to do now is work on our final picture. We're going to switch our quality to the highest quality and upscale times two. And uh, we'll run this once, maybe, you know, have to run it a second time if it's not exactly what we want. But this image looks pretty good. And I think we're going to stick with it. So this, uh, you know, is a way to, to make things the way you want them to look. And maybe you're looking like for a profile picture for your Star Wars game or you know, any other number of things that you'd want to use these types of images for. For me, it's just the having the control to be able to make images just how I want. And from the examples I've shown now, you can see this doesn't just apply to Star Wars. I mean, you can do this to anything. Uh, popular things like Gollum from Lord of the Rings. Um, you know, I mean, any project you're working on. I even use this same uh, setup to go and make designs for sets, like you're seeing here of the White House Oval Office. Very little creatures. Um, but me personally, I really enjoy making the Star Wars characters. And, you know, there's nothing here that can limit your imagination. This this uh, way of doing things gives you the ability to create characters that you want. Even if they're wild and crazy characters, you have the ability to do any of this. So I hope this helped you out. If it did, maybe leave me a like or a subscribe. And if you didn't like this or there's things you think I can do better, drop me a comment and let me know. Thanks for joining us.